Here's why farmers carry suck for training your grip. Eugene the Edgelord strikes again. <laughs> Hey guys, holding things sucks for training your grip. Try holding things instead. What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about farmer's walks. Now you guys know that I'm a big fan of loaded carries in general, pretty much any different type of loaded carry that you can think of, and I'm a fan of it. So front rack carries, uh, zercher carries, overhead carries, sandbag carries in a bear hug, sandbag carries on the back of the shoulder, and obviously the good old farmer's walk as well. It seems that it's become trendy lately to knock on the efficacy of the loaded carry just kind of in a general sense where the standard argument seems to be something along the lines of <laughs> carrying heavy things is a poor use of training economy to which I say lol but that's not actually the exact topic that I want to cover today instead what I want to do today is I want to dissect the recent argument by Eugene Teo where he claims that the farmer's walk sucks as a grip exercise Here's why farmers carry suck for training your grip. You wouldn't use just a low load static exercise like this to strengthen your legs. But people are still doing long sets of farmers carries to strengthen their grip. Farmers carries can still be a great exercise, but unless you're using it enough weight to really challenge your grip for a shorter amount of time, it's not going to do much to build your strength up long term. Something as simple as a double overhand hold on a barbell out of a rack is a more direct stimulus for the grip that will have you training more of your strength as opposed to long term endurance. I like to use a weight that has me failing in around 3 to 10 seconds, and I'll do around 3 to 10 sets of that. You'll probably still want to do some of that longer duration endurance work for your grip strength, and you also want to add in some flexion, extension, and rotational based work to take the muscles of the forearms through a larger range of motion. So let's start from the beginning. You wouldn't use just a low load static exercise like this to strengthen your legs. But people are still doing long sets of farmers carries to strengthen their grip. It's true that performing a loaded carry with a weight that you can hold for an extended period of time is not going to build maximal supporting strength in the gripping muscles, but it will still do well to build strength endurance in the gripping muscles, which is arguably a more applicable life skill than maximal supporting strength is as well from a hypertrophy perspective. The forearms are known to respond well to low intensity, high volume efforts probably because having the capacity to hold things for long periods of time and do a lot of work with our hands was an important attribute for humans to possess over time, over our development. If we look at the real world and the sporting world today, it's blue collar guys, right? The guys who do large amounts of, of low to moderate intensity stuff with their hands, things like pulling and twisting and turning. So if you think of things like screwdrivers and other hand tools, those are the guys that tend to have the biggest and strongest forearms and they're not doing high intensity work. They're doing a lot of low to moderate intensity work. In the sporting world, it's often tennis players, guys who have to withstand hundreds of moderate intensity reverberations, right? Every time that ball contacts the racket, that's a reverberation that the forearm is essentially eating that stress. And they have to withstand hundreds of those moderate intensity stressors every time that they practice or play. So even though low load static work may not build maximal supporting strength in the gripping muscles, just like any low load exercise won't build maximal strength in any muscle group, uh, any kind of suggestion that that type of low load work won't efficiently contribute to the development of the forearms or even to their real world functionality is one that I would say is patently false. Now, there's also a bit of a straw man being built up in this short reel just to be not down by Eugene. Like sure, maybe somebody somewhere out there thinks that holding something for five minutes at a time is the best way to build maximal grip strength, but that specific issue is going to be no more prolific than people misusing any other exercise for any other goal. And just like you can pull out of your butthole the argument that Joe Schmo is wasting his time doing farmer's carries that are too light to meaningfully impact his maximal grip strength, I can just as equally argue that somebody somewhere out there is doing sets of 20 reps on the squat to strengthen their one rep max, or that somebody is performing a five minute wall sit to strengthen their legs. But this is just kind of a non-starter argument because it doesn't say anything about the exercises themselves. All it says is that there's somebody out there misapplying these exercises based on their personal goal set. But that has nothing to do with anything other than not knowing how to train 
properly. A lot of people don't know how to train effectively for their goals, though, whatever they may be. A lot of people chronically live too light, just as a lot of people chronically live too heavy. But to single out the farmer's walk in this particular regard just kind of says to me that you have a personal issue with the farmer's walk, not that it's any better or worse than the alternative option that you present later in your video. Unless you're using enough weight to really challenge your grip for a shorter amount of time, it's not going to do much to build your strength up long term. I think you've solved your own conundrum here, Eugene. Load more weight onto the bar for your farmer's walks, and you'll move more towards the realm of maximal supporting strength in the grip muscles. Ta-da! I'm glad we could find this common ground here. Now, I don't really, I, I just don't really understand the argument being made here though, right? Jokes aside, I, I don't really understand this. It's like saying light work isn't an effective means of training your body to be better at heavy work. Ipso facto, this exercise sucks. Like what? It just, it doesn't really make sense. It's just kind of a weird assertion. And I'm not really sure how we got from A to Z, to be perfectly honest. If the problem is that there isn't enough load to achieve the goal, I don't know add more load, right? <laughs> what does that have to do with the exercise itself? Any exercise sucks if you're going too light with it to achieve the desired outcome. Now, if we were going to actually try to compare apples to apples instead of apples to oranges, the reality is that it takes probably less than 10 seconds to walk a heavy ass loaded carry for a distance of about 10 to 15 yards, which is the minimum distance that you're probably gonna go with, going to want to go with loaded carries, right? That is, if something is so heavy that you can't even carry it for a minimum of 10 yards, then you probably don't really have any business trying to carry that particular weight. But if you can carry something for reason, repeat sets of 10 to 15 yards or 10 to 20 yards even with adequate rest in between these sets, then you are going to be challenging the gripping muscles with intense maximal efforts that last roughly 10 seconds. And then in that case, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that you're building just as much grip strength as the alternative exercise that Eugene is about to suggest. Something as simple as a double overhand hold on a barbell out of a rack is a more direct stimulus for the grip that will have you training more of your strength as opposed to long-term endurance. Now I do find this recommendation very peculiar because at the beginning of his video, Eugene says this. You wouldn't use just a low load static exercise like this to strengthen your legs. And then he goes on to suggest another static exercise to replace the static exercise that he doesn't like. And again, it's just like, why? The loading issue is a straw man that he created. It's an irrelevant point. But why on earth would holding a barbell while holding yourself still be better for your grip strength than holding something heavy and walking with it? How is this a more direct stimulus for the grip? You're holding something in your hands either way. The grip muscles are doing the exact same thing and receiving, receiving the exact same stimulus. Either way, the only difference is that when you are walking with the weight, you actually create constant tiny reverberations through the weights that jar them, right? Those reverberations try to pry your hands open, right? And this actually, in my opinion, further challenges the grip muscles in the process, right? It can actually easily be argued that this creates a more potent stimulus on the gripping muscles as compared to a static hold where you are not moving at all. And I actually briefly mentioned this point on my Instagram story a few days ago, which Eugene responded to, and he compared those reverberations to squatting on a BOSU ball. And I honestly just don't really even know what to do with that. One is like an instability that dramatically blunts force production in the prime movers by essentially forcing over activation of the stabilizing musculature, squatting on a BOSU ball. The other, walking with heavy weights in your hand, is more like if I was to push down hard on the bar. Let's say you were squatting, and every now and then, I just kind of push down on the bar, right? In short but intense spurts, sporadically, while you're trying to stand up with it. That's more like what it is when you're doing a heavy loaded carry, right? That those reverberations are trying to pry the bar, pry the weights out of your hands. It's not an instability in the way that squatting on a BOSU ball is an instability. It's not blunting the force production 
of the forearm musculature. These things are just, they're not the same by any stretch of the imagination. There's no exaggerated emphasis on the stabilizing system in that latter scenario. Rather, there's an external variable really that forces you to double down on your efforts in order to sporadically double down on your efforts in order to maintain the status quo. That's really more what it's like when you're carrying heavy weights instead of just standing there with them. And either way, whether you choose to believe that these reverberations create a more potent stimulus on the gripping muscles or not, they certainly absolutely do not blunt their force production. At best, the farmer's walk is a more potent stimulus on the grip muscles. At worst, the two are equal. But static holds are not more direct, whatever that means. The action in both movements is identical, and so that assertion is really just kind of odd. I like to use a weight that has me failing in around three to ten seconds. Actually, Eugene, I think that static holds with a barbell suck as a grip strength exercise because people are still doing long sets of static holds to strengthen their grip. See the C cuts both ways, dude. If you want to argue about the efficacy of an exercise for a particular goal, then argue about the efficacy of an exercise for a particular goal. But straw manning arguments about people not going heavy enough to accomplish a particular objective has nothing to do with the exercise itself, right? It's a straw man. You're comparing an apple to an orange. I've done plenty of low load, long distance farmers carries, as well as plenty of high load, short distance carries. And I vary the loading based on what I'm trying to accomplish with that training session, just like with literally every other exercise that I do. So yeah, man, I don't have a problem with static holds in general. I've actually done them myself to increase my grip strength specifically for deadlifting. And in that case, I used a mixed grip just like I would during my deadlifts, not a double overhand grip because now the goal there is something that has become more specific, right? And really kind of no matter how much weight you can double overhand hold on a barbell, it's never going to improve how much weight that you can mix grip hold on a barbell because the loading discrepancies between those two things, those two different activities are just going to be too large, right? If you require a highly specific goal though, then you may start to need excessive specificity. That's just kind of the way that things go. But in general, the way I see it is static barbell holds are really just kind of a boring way to accomplish the active grip training while getting literally nothing else done at the same time. But if I'm gonna hold a bar for 100 seconds cumulatively during a training session anyway, not including the rest time that adds up in between sets, how does it hurt me to kill two birds with one stone and instead of just holding that bar for 100 seconds cumulatively, also walk with it at the same time as I'm going to be holding it anyway, right? I still get all the grip training benefits that I would get otherwise, but now I get a stronger stimulus on the back, the hips, and the core. The hip stabilizers are forced to engage in this process. I have to learn how to brace strongly while carrying heavy shit. I have to learn how to control my breathing as I fatigue, as these muscles get tired, as the breaths get harder, as the air becomes more difficult to take in. I have to learn how to not give up my bracing even while constantly exhaling, right? There's just so many other little bits and pieces that are potentially there to be gained by learning how to control heavy shit through motion. And you can get all those benefits at the same time that you were gonna spend training your grip anyway just by doing carries with that weight instead of just holding it. And again, there's nothing wrong with holds in general. They can be used to accomplish specific goals, but most people don't have the time or the energy to isolate every single function of their anatomy in order to accomplish everything they need to accomplish in the gym. And this is really one of my biggest problems with mainstream fitness and the bleed over that you get from enhanced bodybuilding ideology. Everything needs to be isolated all the fucking time or it's not optimal. Even if that assertion were true, which it isn't, it is still a time suck no matter how you cut it. Let me leave you with this. Would you rather spend 20 minutes tackling three endeavors at once and get 95% of the all-time gains that you're ever gonna get in those three endeavors? Or would you rather spend 60 minutes tackling each endeavor individually in order to extract 100% of the gains from each one.
Now, don't forget to add up that time cumulatively also. So if there's 30 different things that a training program needs to address in totality, then it's going to require a commitment of about three and a half hours per week in the package deal scenario versus a, a time commitment of about 10 hours per week in the isolationist scenario. So that's quite a stark contrast. It's a little bit of a philosophical quest, right? Do you want to go all the way 100% or is 95% good enough for you, but you save a hell of a lot of time in the process? Personally, I prefer that latter scenario, and I do think that most people are probably going to be happy extracting the majority of the gains that they're ever going to get on most types of things, most sorts of endeavors, but doing it in one third of the time spent in the gym rather than trying to isolate every single fucking thing and getting those last few relatively meaningless droplets of gains in reality. Remember guys, not everything needs to be optimal and definitely not every single freaking function of the body needs to be isolated. If you want to do farmer's walks, do them. If you want to do static holds, instead do them. But don't think that holding a weight in one scenario is somehow magically better for the grip than holding a weight in another scenario. Either way, you're just holding a fucking weight. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. I hope you found this one informative. Please remember to smash the like button before you go. Leave us a love in the comments down below. Check out OnCareLeafFitness.com for all the coaching and training programs. And as always, keep training hard. I will catch you guys next time.